Hi, welcome to Storytime Online. I'm Sarah, the teen librarian, and I'm guest reading today for Annika. There's um, a bulletin board contest, a snowflake award, uh, or snowflake contest for Ezra Jack Keats books. And this is one of them. It's called Nana Akua Goes to School. And thanks to the publisher for allowing us to read online. This is by Trisha Elam Walker and April Harrison. It's circle time, Zura's favorite time of the day. She scoots to a spot next to Theodore and crisscrosses her legs on the rainbow shaped rug. Ready, set, Mr. Dawson says, looking at the children over his glasses. You bet, they respond and quiet right down. Next Monday is a very important day, Mr. Dawson continues. Each of you will bring your grandparents to school so they can share what makes them special. Yay, Grandparents' Day, shouts Alejo without raising his hand. My abuelo is the best fisherman in the world, and he can explain how to catch the biggest fish. Bisu thrusts both, both hands up and says, My Mimi is the best dentist in the world. She can bring everyone a toothbrush. All the children chime in, their voices leaping over each other to tell what's best about their grandparents. Inside voices, please, says Mr. Dawson. What do yours do? Theodore whispers to Zura, but Zura just shrugs. When Zura's pa pa papa brings her home from school, Nana Akua, her favorite person in the whole universe, is peeling potatoes for dinner. Although Nana's feet don't even reach the floor, she seems as tall as the giant playground slide. Maybe that's because she's filled to the brim with stories about growing up in West Africa, where people carve statues out of wood, trees drip with mangoes, and crayon-colored outdoor markets sell everything you can imagine. Nana puts down the peeler and gives Zura one of her big hugs, the kind that wrap around you like a sweater. Grandparents' Day is next week, she says. Maybe you can help me decide what to talk about. Zura stares down at the floor. Zura's mommy knows about Grandparents' Day, too. Her smile is bright as a sunbeam. How about if Papa plays the djembe drums while Nana talks to your classmates, she suggests, coming over to help Nana. Zura frowns and thinks about the last time she and Nana went to the park. Nana pushed her high to the sky on the swings and Zura was almost flying. But on their way home, a little boy pointed at Nana and Zura heard him say to his mother, that lady looks scary. And the very next day, a server in the little tea house stared so hard at Nana, she forgot to bring them sugar cookies with her tea. This is because Nana Akua looks different. When she was young, her parents followed an old African tradition they put marks on her face to show which tribal family she belongs to and to represent beauty and confidence. Those marks never wash off and never go away. Zura looks at her Nana, holding back tears that wait in the corner of her eyes. Nana Akua puts down her potato, takes Zura's hand and says, precious girl, why such a sad face? It feels hard to explain, but Zura wants to try. She swallows and takes a deep breath. What if someone at school laughs at you or acts mean? She asks quietly. Nana Akua thinks for a moment. I have an idea, she says, and puts Zura's arm through hers. Together they walk down the hall to Zura's room. Nana points to the bed. How about we bring your favorite quilt to class? These quilt patterns come from another long ago tradition. Even though they are not exactly the same as the marks on my face, they can help explain them. What do you think? Zura traces some of the designs she loves with her fingers. When Nana Akua first made the quilt for Zura, she explained that the patterns were Adinkra symbols of the Akan people of Ghana. The symbols represent more than 50 important qualities like wisdom and creativity. Zura wishes the marks were only on the quilt and not on Nana Akua's face. Still, she says, Okay, we can bring it. On Grandparents' Day, Zura wears one of her African dresses sewn by Nana, 
and Nana Akua looks especially regal in her bright patterned kaba with matching skirt and head wrap. There are lots of oohs and ahs when they arrive. The classroom is decorated with a rainbow of balloons that float up to the ceiling. There are wel large welcome signs made with colored markers. A tall chair is on the rug for the grandparents to sit in when they speak. First is Alejo's abuelo, who passes around photos of the biggest bluefish he ever caught. Next, Bisu's Mimi shows the class a video called Mr. Cavity and the Magic Toothbrush. And then Lester's grandparents, who owned a barber shop for many years, hold up matching clippers. Anybody need a haircut? They ask laughing. Finally, it's Nana Akua's turn. She sits in the special grandparent chair with Zura next to her. Zura clutches her quilt tightly and her voice shakes when, we, when she gives her introduction. This is my Nana Akua and she is from Ghana, a country in West Africa. Nana Akua squeezes Zura's shoulder and starts talking. Hello, children. I'm glad you noticed the marks on my face. Has anyone seen anything like them before? No, say all the children. These marks were gifts from my parents who were happy and proud that I was born, she continues. I am likewise proud to wear them. Most Ghanan parents don't celebrate in this way anymore, but it was once an important tradition. Zura watches her eyes wide as cups as Nana Akua walks slowly around the circle so everyone can see her face up close. It's interesting, she says, that in this country, I often notice people who put tattoos on their bodies that have special meanings. Yours are way better than tattoos, Theodore says, because they grow up with you. Nana Akua smiles. Why, thank you, young man, she says, and I brought some special makeup so that each of you can have beautiful African symbols on your faces too, the kind that wash off. My expert helper will hold up her quilt which shows some symbols you can choose from. The other students look at Zura expectantly. She unfolds the quilt with care. Today, I'm going to choose the Bese Saka symbol. It looks like a flower, and my Nana told me it stands for power and unity. Nana Akua paints the symbol onto Zura's cheek in gold, while Zura holds very still. The other children clap when it's all done. Come and choose your favorite symbol, Zura says to them. Alejo, who wants to be a beatboxer, points to the Buemudua symbol because he thinks it looks like a keyboard. Nana Akua tells him it means high quality and excellence. Bisu wants to be a veterinarian and picks the Jankam symbol, which is shaped like a crocodile, one of her favorite animals. It stands for cleverness. Peter and Inez decide on the Adwo symbol, which looks like the inside of a sliced apple with two identical halves. Twins like us, Peter says. Nana says the symbol means peace and quiet. Like mommy and daddy say, we never give them, Inez shouts. Nana Akua paints and paints until every child has their own design. The other grandparents choose symbols for themselves, too. Zura's face glows as she watches Nana Akua fold up her quilt to go home. And this time, it's Zura who gives her very special, not like anyone else's Nana, one of those big hugs, the kind that wrap around you like a sweater. There's also a glossary here and some information about some of the things in the story. And here are those symbols.